Well, hello, boys and girls. My name is Clint, better known as Clint the Snake Man. Today, we're gonna go over some of our pets that we have and their story. What kind of animal they are and how we obtained that animal. In other words, how we received them, how they ended up in our care. So the first thing we do is we wash our hands with hand sanitizer. Yes, that stuff's hard to come by nowadays, but we do have plenty here because we run a snake education business. So the first snake we're gonna see is the newest snake that we have. Does not even have a name yet. So if you can come up with a good name, send us a message. Maybe we'll use your name. Don't know if it's male or female yet. That's how new it is. We have not checked to see what it is, but we do know that it is a milk snake and not native to the state of Texas, but was in the, oh, he's kind of wiggly. Look at that. Oh, calm down, calm down. Don't know much about this animal. He's brand new, so he wouldn't be going to a birthday party or anything, but this guy was in Fort Worth. He was found by animal control there, who I trained how to handle snakes and they quickly knew this was not a local snake and didn't know what to do with this guy or gal. My guess is it's a guy calming down just a little bit by the way I'm holding it. So gives you an idea of one of our snakes from North Texas. So let's say goodbye to this beauty. Say bye-bye, wave your tongue at everybody. That's a pretty snake. Thank you for not biting me. Okay, let's see what else we can find here. We're gonna see the next snake is also a milk snake in a small carry container like this. But I'm sure this snake is older than the one you just met. This is Easter. Easter is a Nelson Eye milk snake. And he actually came from a siege. In other words, where snakes were confiscated and given to the Houston SPCA and they needed to find a place for these home, a home for these snakes. And so this snake here was a mess. He was tiny, covered with mites. Mites are little insects that suck the blood out of animals and they're called scale mites on a snake. So he was covered with mites. So we finally got the mites off of him. He was actually living in a little container just like this for that time period. He does not live in that small of a container today. That's where he was temporary. Well, once we got rid of the mites, we're trying to get him to eat. Just a little snake, so he needs to eat. Wouldn't eat for us, wouldn't eat for us. We tried and we tried and we stuff a little dead mouse down his mouth, wouldn't swallow it. Kind of spit it back out like, I'm not gonna eat. Yeah, that's kind of what you did, uh-huh. Yeah, I was there. So one morning, I put a little mouse in front of him. He starts swallowing it down. Gobble, gobble, gobble. That's gonna be on one of our other videos, how snakes eat. Swallows it down. We're trying to figure out, well, why'd he decide to eat? Then he starts hunting. You know how a snake hunts? They're moving around, they're looking, they're tasting everything, trying to find more food. So I fed him again. He swallowed it down. Mm-hmm. Then he wanted another, he swallowed that down. And I'm like, okay, wait just a minute. If I keep feeding you, you're gonna get sick. We needed to wait for him to eat it and digest it. That means kind of go to the bathroom afterwards. So that took a couple weeks. And once that happened, we knew he was okay. Gonna make it. But that took about six months for a little tiny snake that lost a lot of blood and he survived. Today, I would actually take a tube and put it down his throat down into his tummy, which is right about here, and I would inject a carnivorous diet. So a food that comes from my vet right into his tummy. But at that time, this was a long time ago, we didn't know how to do that yet. But now we do, but you made it anyway. So wave your tongue at everybody. That's a good boy. Wave that tongue at everybody. So the snake here, we did name him Easter for a reason because that Sunday morning, that he ate for the first time was Easter Sunday. Oh my, this 
the big snake. I have no idea who's in here. They're not labeled, so it's just a guess when I pull out a snake. So let's see who this is. They are my snakes, so I do know who they are. Yes, my wife got them together, not me. Okay, well, it's a ball python. I can tell by the feel. Well, it's a mess of a ball python. She needs to shed. Look at that. She has messed up shed on her head there. I'll have to get a wet washcloth and work that off. You can see how some of that's coming off right now. This is Tuba. And Tuba, I wanted to call her Katie because she came from Katie, Texas. Right, she was left behind in an apartment that had been abandoned. And when the apartment people went to restore that apartment, it was destroyed, it's in bad shape. They found a little aquarium in the closet with this snake in it, no water bowl. We don't know when she had eaten last. So I get this snake. They thought it was a boa constrictor. This is a ball python, not a boa. So I pick her up. She looked pretty healthy. She was alive, which was amazing because we know she had gone 30 days with zero water. We don't know how long without food. So I stop off at the gas station to get a bottle of water. I cut the top off with my pocket knife and I put her head in it and she drinks all but that much of the bottle of water. That's how thirsty she was. So her name's Tuba, not Katie. I wanted Katie, but my son wanted Tuba. My son won and I lost. So let's say, bye Katie. Wait, you're talking to everybody. Oh, Katie, Tuba, okay. See, when I called her Tuba, she stuck her tongue out. Yeah, if you want to be called Tuba too, Okay, let's see what else we have in here. My goodness, we just have all kinds of animals everywhere. I put them in bags because it's comfortable and they like that. So let's see, oh, this one's not as big. It's a smaller snake. Huh, again, I have no clue what this is. Oh, it's gonna be a heavy bodied snake too. Let's see, what do we have? Oh, Snapey, this is Snape. Snape, say hi. Notice the marks on Snape. This is a spider morph ball python, just like Tuba, except this is a spider morph. It was bred to be like this, and he is a rescue from the Dallas area. On a construction site, some people found this snake in the middle of nowhere. They didn't know what it was. They sent me this email for ID. I told them what it was, and Dallas and Houston are not close. They're about four hours apart. But my niece is a pastor there in Dallas. And of course, if you grow up with Uncle Clint, you're not scared of snakes. So I called Cheryl and she went and picked up Snape here. And this wonderful pet, unlike Easter, I knew how to tube feed when I got Snape. So I put the tube down his throat, down all the way into about his tummy. That's right about here, right about there where my finger is. See, that's the tummy. And I put the tube in and then I would inject the diet, oh, a little bit head shy, inject the diet down into his tummy and doing that for about six months, then he finally would eat. So now he eats a frozen dinner about every two weeks and that's his diet he's doing real good he's getting big he's big around he's a boy so he won't get as big as tuba the girls get bigger in ball pythons okay let's say bye tuba oh i mean are you tuba no say bye snake y'all snake's a harry potter character right did you know that yeah he turned out to be a good guy okay let's see what else do we have in here must have something right Snake. Let's see. We'll get dizzy. That snake's gonna get dizzy spinning around like that. Let's see, what do we have in here? Oh my goodness. This is definitely a snake. Oh my girlfriend. This is my girlfriend. Don't tell my wife. This is lucky. Hi girlfriend. What's going down, girlfriend? I know you're the best, bestest and the westest. 
This animal here is an amazing story. She was, I don't know where she came from, don't know who owned her. All I know is she either escaped or they let her go. She was found in someone's garage on a freezing cold winter day, many years ago, about 18 years ago. And this guy calls me and I remember where I was. I was in Kingwood, Texas, driving down Kingwood Drive. I just finished for the first time, five birthday parties in one day. Didn't know if I could do it, but it was our first time to do five in one day with one person. Well, I get this phone call. Hello, Mr. Clint the Snake Man, can I help you? Guy goes, there's a snake in my garage. Really? Sure there is. <clears throat> it's like 35 degrees outside, way too cold for any snake. And he goes, no, no, there really is a snake in my garage. And I go, you sure it's alive? And he goes, yes. And I go, okay, so it's moving. He goes, oh no, it hasn't moved for two days. I go, okay, I'm sure the snake's dead. I'm sorry, but you know, th this is just too cold for any snake. He goes, it's not dead. I go, and how do you know it's not dead? He goes, well, tongue goes in and out now and then. I go, oh, it's not dead. And he goes, oh, well, what do I do? And I go, okay, where do you live? He goes, I live in Missouri City. And I go, oh boy, that's a long drive, but I'll drive out there, I'll see what I get. Well, I pick her up. I have a temperature gun that I usually keep with me at most times. It looks a whole lot like this. The day I put it on 75, that day she was 35, barely moving. So I put her up under my jacket just to kind of slowly warm her up as I got home. I get home, she's breathing through her mouth. Her mouth is open. She had a severe upper respiratory infection. Yeah, I know you were so sick. And we had to get her antibiotics and take care of her, but she wouldn't eat for us. We never saw her drink water. My vet injected water into her, you know, through her mouth, not through her skin. And we gave her some water she still wouldn't drink or eat that we could see. She went for 18 months without eating. Now, this was winter when she was caught in this man's garage. So how do I know how long she ate prior to that? She might have gone two years without eating, we don't know. But she is healthy, she's doing great. She's not a young snake. She's probably around 30 years old, I'm guessing. Maybe, yeah, probably around 30. But she's a good animal, super sweet. She's actually my magic animal. That's right, she does magic tricks. She can pull a penny from behind your ear. No, no, I'm kidding. No, what kind of magic she does is she helps you fall in love with her. In other words, if you're scared half to death of snakes, You'll end up at least petting her, maybe holding her, maybe even putting her on your shoulders like this and wearing her like a snakeless because why? She's that friendly. She's never done anything to make somebody think she's not friendly. Even during this whole COVID-19, she's been held very little, but look at her. She's going, daddy loves me. It doesn't matter. So right now, this animal here is my personal favorite. So here she is, and say goodbye to Lucky. This is Toby. Toby likes greens. He's strictly a vegetarian. Toby is one of our rescues that came from the Fresno area, and he was about the size of a football at that time. Now he's much larger, as you can tell. My hand on top of him this big pumpkin, pumpkin leaf that he's trying to decide if he wants to actually eat it or not. He's a big animal. He weighs about 95 pounds right now. He will kind of walk around like a dog. You can kind of touch his head if you want. He can move whatever he wants. He basically just has a forward. But this is Toby, a rescue from Fresno, Texas, walking up a lady's driveway who did not know what to do with him, actually thought he was a water tortoise, turtle, not a sulcata African spur tortoise.